I'm Dave Devera. I work with for the Philippine Association for Intercultural Development, an NGO in the Philippines which works with indigenous peoples and help them file claims and map their traditional territories. Okay, um, you've been in the field of uh, participatory GIS in the Philippines for the past 12 years and to support indigenous people claim land. Looking at the technology and methods used, which one would you consider as the most appropriate for ensuring in ownership and the process? In the, past, in the past 12 years, we've practically used all of the available methodologies in participatory GIS. But for me, the most, uh, the most effective uh, methodology is participatory 3D modeling, basically because the people are, are in control. They start by building the whole model, they, they control the data that's put in the model, and they define the results of the whole process. So for me, participatory 3D modeling is the most effective tool that can be used to, to help people who file claims for their traditional territories. Can you just briefly elaborate on one of the success stories of uh, using that model in the Philippines over the 12 years that you've been in? Okay, there have been so many. Uh, there yes, yeah. Uh, one, one particular example that we've done is a claim of the Aboriginal peoples in, in uh, North and Central Philippines in a place called Pastolan in Bataan, in Central Luzon. It is where the former U.S. naval base is located and where a huge part of the area is still closed canopy forest. And the Aboriginal people have been neglected for a long time, filed a claim in which everybody thought would not be possible. But with their insistence, we facilitated the construction of a three-dimensional model wherein the people identified all the boundaries of their traditional lands. It included a lot of information about their, their hunting, uh, hunting activities, about where the old burial grounds were, and all of the necessary information that, that was to be used to file a claim. Today, this is the first claim ever in an industrialized zone that has been approved. Nearly one-third of the whole former U.S. naval base has been officially titled to the Aboriginal people of Central Luzon. So what did it cost the community? Because it's very challenging, there are risks involved, of resistance. Most of the times the government or the political will may not be there. But the whole process for them to reach where they were. The resistance always comes from government and a lot of vested interests. The, the whole process is fully supported by almost all of the communities we work with. First of all, it is a very relevant process. They know that it is a process that will ultimately will empower them and liberate them. It is a process that they understand and control. So what makes it difficult is, for example, a lot of state restrictions that deny access to a lot of these communities that actually even question the results of such PGIS uh, activities. So mainly this is the resistance that people face because apparently a lot, of, a lot of vested interests do not want the truth to be known, do not want people to be empowered, do not want people to ask, ask questions. So there is resistance from such groups, but for communities there is just so much overwhelming support. So how did you think um, overcome some of the obstacles, especially in relation to the resistance, before no. they succeeded? Well, number one, you have to show that you're competent. In spite of the fact that there is resistance, there is criticism, a good product always sells itself. If your product can answer and respond to all of these criticisms, they will have no choice but to eventually change their minds and accept it. Number two, what we do is something that is necessary. It is endorsed by the people, supported by the people, such as, in fact, right now, even if government sometimes doesn't want what we do, they ask us to partner with them to implement several government programs and policies that respond to the needs of indigenous people. Given some of the obstacles that you face, particularly relating to the resistance by the government, can you give us some ways or methods that you use to be able to overcome those obstacles? Okay. <clears throat> Partnering with, with government is a very, very strategic uh, act that, that one can do. No? Because what you are doing is something that responds to, it, to a community's need. Government will partner with you. But in, first of all, you have to show your competence. We have partnered with government so that our work becomes legitimate and becomes recognized. 
We've been partnering with a lot of local governments in helping them out come out with participatory maps that will define local land uses. We've also partnered with government to help them facilitate conflict resolution in a lot of areas where there's conflict. We've also partnered with government so that they can implement the law that, that, that help people file claims and help people do delineation of ancestral land. Basically all of this has been happening because we've shown enough competence that government has enough respect for our work and this is the main result. Mm. Uh, finally, let me just ask, how have you built up that confidence? I mean, that competence, did you have training sessions? We, when we decided to go into community mapping, we didn't do it as an ad hoc type of work. We consciously and seriously decided to allocate resources to that activity. We identified people whose main responsibilities were mapping. That is a very important lesson that we learned because if you do mapping, if you go into mapping as an ad hoc type of work, you just make the activity as an add-on to the, to the staff that you're going to assign. Number two, we allocated resources. No matter how meager our resources were, we fully understood that when we went into mapping, it would need allocation of resources, meaning resources both for human resources, we trained people, we diligently looked for resources to get equipment, and lastly, we practiced it. We did not do mapping on the table, we did not do mapping by the textbook. All of the methodologies that we've developed and we've, we've tried, hard tested and field tested again and again and validated by communities. And that is how we build competence.